What's up YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. It's Demarius Jackson. So I'm very excited if you can't tell. A few days ago, I found a Yamaha YS62 in the secondhand store here in Japan. If you don't know, I live in Okinawa, Japan. And this is the second horn that I found in that store that is a purple uh, logo horn. The first one I bought for my son, I was looking for a cheaper model saxophone and I came across this, uh, I can't even remember the model number. I did a video on it, I'll leave a link to it up here somewhere, but I think it's like the YAS 31 or 32. It's a, basically a beginner model horn, but it's still a great horn. And like I said, I came across this one the other day. So when I first went into the store, it was in the case, it was wrapped up in ceram wrap because they take very good care of all of their stuff. And I asked the guy that worked at the store if if he could unwrap it for me and I saw the case it was actually one of the older cases and I was like had an inkling that it could be a purple logo but I wasn't obviously sure but I kind of made up in my mind that if it was I was gonna go ahead and purchase it so I asked the guy if I could see it he laid it on the table cut the ceram wrap off of it opened it and sure enough it was a purple logo horn and I was ecstatic but that wasn't enough to make me buy it of course so I took a quick look at it glanced you know, did my usual non-repair tech functions check and it checked out pretty good. I didn't have a mouthpiece on me, but the price is pretty much what sold me on it. So they were asking for roughly 99,000 yen for it, which is a roughly equivalent to about $950 US. And so I knew for a fact that these horns go for way more than that. Of course, if they're in Good, good working condition overhaul, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the price of 950, you can't even beat it. Even I figured uh, that even the work that I would put into it or pay somebody to put into it, it would still be worth it. So in this video, I'm going to just go over, take a quick look at it if you're interested. So I think what I'll do is I'll play the horn that I just bought, and then I'll play my typical horn. So before we get to all that, I kind of want to go over my history of horns because uh, I'll just let the spoiler alert out. This may be my primary horn. So in the past the horns that I played on I started off with a Selmer series 3 in college uh, I had a Peter Ponzel neck not because it was special but just because I dented my neck and that's the one I bought uh, from there I moved on to what was it I think I moved on to a Yamaha Custom Z and then I got rid of that horn then I moved on to a Mark 6 had that for a while moved on from that horn and now I have my Eastman that I've had for quite a while and it's a great horn there's absolutely nothing wrong with it um, but this horn reminds me a lot of the Custom Z. So from my knowledge of the purple logo horns, all the earlier ones, and uh, I'll take a picture or write down the serial number and put it on the screen. I'm pretty sure this is one of the earlier models, so like I want to say early 80s. But these horns are built really, really, <laughs> really, really. But these horns are built really, really well. Feels really good under my fingers. It's still considered, I guess we could consider it a modern horn. I was born in the 80s, so I'm modern. But what I really like about it is the core sound of the horn. So some of the Yamahas, just in my opinion, especially these later ones, I believe it's the YAS875 or something like that. It has a very, very pure sound. And not that this horn doesn't sound pure, but it's a little bit more of a complex sound to me. Uh, a lot of times, once again, this is my opinion, all those horns, you know, they, they're built a certain way, so I guess they sound alike, and it's really, really clean and pure, and I'm, that's not really what I'm going for. And so the modern day 62s that are made now, I, I feel like now that the Custom Z has kind of reached this pinnacle, they started lowering the quality of the 62s, at least the ones that I've played, and that Z and then that 875 has taken the forefront. So anyway, this horn that I have now reminds me greatly of the Custom Z. I'm very familiar and I actually like Yamaha horns. They feel really comfortable under my fingers and I love the sound of this one. So anyway, let's take a look at it now. Once again, like I said, this is the case. Uh, I recognize the case from my earlier days. I had a couple of colleagues and friends back in college that had uh, the older model 62s. I don't think it was a purple logo, but the case is easily recognizable. And like I said, when he opened it up, bam, there it was. That purple logo that I have grown to recognize and I am growing to love. So like I said before, it's a great horn. Uh, one issue right out of the box is anything below D, below the low D does not work. And it's mainly because that low C is not regulated. And of course, you know, if the low C is not regulated, 
uh, nothing below those notes will work. So I'm going to get that fixed, but <laughs> all the other notes uh, from D and above do work. And like I said, I love the sound of it and I love the feel of this horn. And here's the neck. I guess it's in pretty decent condition considering it's 40 some odd years old or almost 40 years old like me. Yeah, and there you have it. So I'm going to play a couple of tunes or not a couple. I'm going to play one tune out of a book I actually bought today from, I hope I say his name right, Steve Cortica. Uh, it's one of his Bebop A2 books. I also bought this Odd Meter Town because I'm trying to get into that into the new year. But anyway, here we go. New year, new horn. Here's the first one. This is the one I just bought, the YAS62 Purple Logo. Oh. <laughs> For some context, here's me playing my current horn, the Eastman 52nd Street Alto. there you have it hopefully you enjoyed the video like comment and subscribe and i'll see you on the next video out